One of the core elements to making an indie game or a short game is the game's atmosphere. Short horror games or stylized games usually depend 90% of its fan base or player base depending on the uh, atmosphere that it builds around. Now I'm not that good at game art but I have made a few projects along the way so today we're going to be looking at how you can build a decent atmosphere for your game. So I've been recently making this project and it's really nothing but a PSX game demo made in the Unity game engine but I'm going to be solely focusing on this one or it, it actually doesn't matter which kind of game you're making it's basically the same. Now this process can vary depend on like you know which kind of game you're making what the game's you know environment is how the game is gonna feel and how where it's gonna set on so yeah these things are completely objective and you know you can completely change them however you wanna but here's my take on them if you're an indie developer and you're making a, a sort of like a short game or a playstation in one style game then one of the easiest way to get a decent atmosphere around your game is to just add in fog. Now fog is very important when you're trying to build an atmosphere. One of the main reasons why is because fog gives a sense of depth in your scene. Like it kind of means that even if your scene is small and doesn't really have a lot to offer, fog can drastically increase that depth on your scene and the environment on your level. Especially added with some distant objects such as trees or a decent skybox and you know some decent looking fog your game will look a lot better than it previously did here's an example of what fog can make your game look like this is the fog turned off and this is when you turn on the fog now as you can see it drastically changes the way your game look and adding in fog can make your game look much much better than it previously did it's cheap it's less time consuming and it gives off great results especially if you're an indie developer you would probably know how hard it is to make game environments look good. Another very important aspect is the image processing or post-processing effect. So look at how this scene looks and look at how it looks when you turn it off. See, there is a great difference between just adding in a few different image effects. But however, when making a game that's, you know, sort of like retro style and PS1 style, you can't actually use Im Im image effects such as blooms or anti-aliasing. So in my case, adding in some tone mapping, some uh, color correction, some color adjustments, and some other effects such as lift gamma grain, and then shadows and tone maps, um, you know, midtones and highlights, and etc. editing them up, depending on the skybox look and everything, I got a very decent looking result, and I'm pretty happy with how the image image effects turned out. So keep that in mind that not to use too many effects, but to use effects and color grading that is kind of related to your you know scene that you're going for and the vibe that you're going for another very crucial detail is environmental detail now even if you're making a small game to make the world the environment around you feel like it's lived in or make it feel like as if it's really something that's supposed to have an existence in this world you have to add a lot of detail and props to your scene by detail i mean that not to leave your scene specifically empty, even if it's a short or small game. Details such as small bushes, abandoned places, tins, cargoes, or leftovers from other people, and etc. etc. can actually really make your world feel like it's been lived in. And another very crucial part is the placement of trees and other objects in your world. Now, to make sure that your world doesn't feel like it's you know ripping off every sing every simple game design that's out there you have to put in a lot of effort and thoughts on how you're going to be placing the trees where you're going to be leaving the open areas for different props to set in and other things another thing to note is to not to overcomplicate your level not to add too many things at one space or not to you know use up all the space that you have so the final step is audio and music when you're making a game Audio, music, and ambience are one of the most important things to build an atmosphere around the player. To actually put the player into the shoes of a person who's actually experiencing the events that are happening in the game, you have to add in some good amount of music and, you know, some ambience and other stuff. Simple things such as sounds of crickets or forest ambience or even footprints of player movement 
can actually help build a great atmosphere. This is especially notable when you're making a horror game or something. Audio such as footsteps or small sounds such as, you know, chirping of crickets, sound of the wind, and, you know, birds or forest ambience and, you know, other things. Other sound effects are very crucial in these small segments.